Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Nia Jax has become one of the most criticised figures in WWE, with a reckless in-ring style that has caused injuries to Kyrie Sane, Becky Lynch and Bayley. Just two weeks ago, she was in the news for a dangerous chokeslam bomb on Dana Brooke. People have called for her to be disciplined, to go back to the performance centre, even for WWE to fire her before she causes truly serious harm. But last night, Jax won everyone back on side by screaming about her butthole. In the payoff to the Jax vs Lana tables storyline that started in September last year, the two had an unannounced tables match on Raw with zero promotion. Towards the end of the match, Nia Jax missed a leg drop on the apron and proceeded to comically yell, ow, my hole, as loud as she possibly could. It brings a whole new meaning to the hardest part of the ring. Lana then pushed Jax through a propped up table on the barricade, winning the match. But Twitter was far more interested in Nia's hole. So much so that she became a trending topic. With Mick Foley tweeting that he expects my hole to become the new Austin 316, Brian Alvarez tweeted in concern. They just reported that Nia Jax has been helped to the back to receive medical treatment. I hope she does not have a hole in her hole. And Mickey James asked, dear Nia Jax is butt broken. I heard there was a crack in it. Hashtag my hole. Also, I think Fox emoji has a donut emoji you can borrow, which she then clarified meant a butt donut seat for people with hemorrhoids. This is my job. But despite it being one of the most talked about things on Twitter and one of the most watched clips on WWE's YouTube channel, anyone going to the latter will be disappointed, as WWE have censored out Nia's my whole line. Yeah, the, the whole thing. Indicating they weren't happy with Jax's improvising, as usually they include the finish of the match in full, only editing bits out if there's a botch. Because, as far as we know, whole isn't a banned word on YouTube like bitch, which WWE often do censor out. Because if whole is a banned word on YouTube, then my god is this video in trouble. Maybe in a few months time though, we'll have something far more crude. A performance of whap at WrestleMania. Following the report that Bad Bunny is set to team with Damian Priest to take on Miz and John Morrison at WrestleMania, WWE's Nick Khan has told Forbes that they're also interested in bringing in Cardi B for some upcoming shows, particularly because they can get people like Bad Bunny for a long period of time while music acts aren't touring. Cardi B was name dropped last month on the Legends Night episode of Raw, which led to her tweeting out that she used to be a fan of wrestling and then got into a Twitter argument with Lacey Evans, who was responding to her in character. It's unlikely we'll see a Zelina Vega return in WWE though, who was controversially fired from the company after refusing to stop streaming on Twitch late last year. Vega's 90 day non-compete clause comes to an end this Thursday, which means she could show up in AEW, Impact or anywhere else that is currently putting on shows very soon. However, according to Sean Ross Sapp over on Fightful Select, no one has shown any interest in signing her. Sean does note though that that's normal as companies wouldn't want to tip their hand and reveal who they do and do not want to sign. Where would you like to see Zelina Vega end up? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of Nia Jax's hole. Ow! And now it's time for my Raw review in about five minutes. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Ronald Coleman, baby, and the mayor of Painesville, Dan. With the Elimination Chamber Go Home Show just next week, we got WWE's new monthly Raw special. The old crap, we haven't got anything booked for the next pay-per-view episode. Still better than Legends Night. A video package opened the episode recapping Drew McIntyre and Sheamus's six-month on-screen WWE friendship like it was 20 years long. WWE's video editing department are genuinely the second best in the world at rewriting its own history. Russia's first. And then the main show started with definitely not Raw General Manager Adam Pearce welcoming down a returning, definitely not Raw Underground General Manager Shane McMahon, who was there purely to announce Drew will defend his WWE Championship in an Elimination Chamber match against Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, Sheamus, 
and The Miz. Shane then weirdly condescended both Pierce and McIntyre backstage, worryingly teasing he'll be back for some kind of McMahon storyline for WrestleMania. But that's bad booking for the future! What about the bad booking? right now. The idea of just announcing everyone for the chamber in lieu of qualifying matches was rushed and lazy. If they just planned slightly more ahead, they could have started qualifiers last week. Matches could have had stakes. Wrestlers could have genuinely reset their momentum on the road to WrestleMania, instead of the announcers just repeating the word momentum ad nauseum throughout the night. The first was AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy having a decent match, repping my 2010 TNA, where AJ worked over Hardy's ankle and then tapped him out in the calf crusher. Momentum! By having one guy beat him. Following Xavier Woods quickly beating Retribution's leader Mustafa Ali last week, the New Day beat up the Retribution tag lineup of Slapjack and T-Bar here. This feud has lost all momentum, no matter how good Ali's promos are on Raw Talk. Ric Flair cut his reddest promo all year, announcing he's managing Lacey Evans now, not sleeping with her, and they're going for Asuka's title. This set up a number one contenders match of sorts, with Lacey just casually dropping the idea of a ranking system in WWE, which Charlotte lost because she beat up Lacey too much, meaning Evans won despite her getting beaten up by Charlotte loads, making it Lacey versus Asuka for the title at Elimination Chamber. Because momentum, guys, it's it's all about momentum. Momentum hurtling straight into the center of the earth. He's appeared on Raw. He's appeared on NXT. He's appeared on SmackDown. He occasionally appears on lead guitar for you too. He's the Omni Edge. It was to decide which champion he'll face at WrestleMania. And because of the chamber announcement, he still hasn't decided. Cheers, Edge. Nice, th thanks for coming. Miz came out with John Morrison and Angel Garza. Oh, Garza's with them now, by the way. To say it doesn't matter what Edge does, because Miz will cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase regardless. This went into Garza versus Damian Priest, who was again accompanied by Bad Bunny at ringside. Fair play to the guy, he's a mainstream star that actually loves wrestling so much, he's showing up every week. Bad Bunny, please, you just need to stick around for two more episodes to see Priest through his three-week push period. Bad Bunny got Miz and Morrison ejected from ringside, letting Priest beat Gaza. Speaking of three-week pushes... After being made to look like a total chump last week to Bobby Lashley, Riddle had a number one contenders match of sorts for the US title against Keith Lee. While Riddle's promo about binge-watching the Air Bud franchise was... What it was, the in-ring action between the two men was fantastic, as was MVP watching on from commentary. Lee pinned Riddle with a spirit bomb, and the two respectfully shook hands afterwards. But Bobby Lashley's gimmick ain't got respect for anyone right now. Lashley brutally beat down both men, master locking Riddle again, and taking out Lee with the steel steps. This is a great start to a Lee versus Lashley feud. Which means WWE announced a triple threat between Lee, Lashley, and Riddle for Elimination Chamber. Hopefully it's spins off into a singles program between Bobby and Keith for WrestleMania. Caruso alert! Bianca Belair turned up backstage to say her Mania opponent might be Sasha Banks, and it also might be Asuka. Thanks for coming, Bianca. You told us so much. Furthering the tag title feud after becoming number one contenders last week, Lana took on Nia Jax in a tables match, picking up their tables storyline from three months ago that WWE have totally ignored since. This was the five-star rated match where Nia screamed, my hole, after hitting her ass on the ring apron, and then Lana pushed her through a table to win. This spun off into Shayna Baszler beating up Naomi, which Naomi won thanks to a Lana distraction. Remember last year's Elimination Chamber, where Shayna beat everyone. Pepperidge Farm remembers. And the main event was another momentum match between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre, which WWE billed as unfinished business, and Drew himself billed on Twitter as, for the first time ever, in 2021. They both have really good chemistry, playing moves and sequences off their 82 other matches from the past year. But it was again mired by another crappy finish. Sheamus came out early on to eventually bro kick Orton for the DQ, but Drew took him out to stand tall, putting over the idea that McIntyre is ready to face the multiple opponents of the Chamber. Not the most inspiring finish to Raw, but after the last month of goofy supernatural bollocks, 
I'm fine with that. What did you think of WWE Raw? Let me know in the comments and vote in our poll on a poll match on Twitter by following us at WrestleTalk underscore TV, where 46% of you said it was good, but 30% thought it was poor. This was an episode. At least they've got stuff announced now for the Chamber pay-per-view. I really enjoyed Lee vs Riddle, even though it came at Riddle's expense. And Priest is still getting over. Two weeks, come on, let's do this! But I find my expectations for Raw being so low right now. The finishes, the backward stories, the repetitive matches. This week's Raw is an uninspiring poor. Maybe we need a huge WWE faction to return at WrestleMania 37. Click the video on the right to find out about teased plans for a Nexus comeback in WWE. And what are the 10 worst mistakes WWE made with Roman Reigns? Click the video below that to watch Adam Blompier's latest list and subscribe to their new home of parts unknown. I've been Mr. Davis. Jam that jam.